Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. I'm down here at the bench working on a uh, project. I've actually had like three different projects I'm working on at once and I was getting a little frazzled so I took a break. I had some testing I had to go to down in Indy and then uh, got back from that. Um, and I uh, took a little bit of a break and did a little video experiment which you've probably seen on the channel there. Occasionally I'll uh, I'll uh, escape uh, from life by doing a little artistic stuff on the computer, graphics or whatever. Uh, but now back to work. Um, and I'm working on this. Uh, this is the beginning of a CW transmitter for 630 meters. And uh, I was just fiddling around with this case here, um, laying out the boards. This is going to be the board for the VFO. This is going to be the board for the power amplifier. And uh, going to have connectors on the front, uh, a switch for power, a tuning control, a uh, uh, SO239 that will be a receiver output that will go to your receiver. On the back, I'll have an SO239 for the antenna connection, a uh, power connection, um, and uh, something else can't remember what else. I've got to get back to my notes. But it's basically going to be a CW transmitter um, only for 630 meters. Uh, the VFO is going to be controlled by an Arduino Nano and uh, an SI5351 uh, clock generator chip breakout board. Now this board has three outputs. One of these outputs is going to be the VFO output that's going to drive the power amplifier. The Arduino is going to have uh, keying input from your straight key. Oh, well, that's the other jack on the back. <laughs> Duh, the key input. Um, the Arduino is going to have a keying input from your straight key, and it's going to control a couple of relays. Um, one relay on the Arduino board itself over here is going to, uh, when you're keying and transmitting, is going to ground the receiver output to protect your receiver. Um, it's also going to have a uh, relay control line that's going to go to a transmit receive relay over on the PA that will switch uh, power to the PA and the antenna output to the PA uh, when you're transmitting. And then uh, that relay will then switch the antenna output around the PA to the receiver for when you're in receive mode. And the Arduino will control all of that. So I'm, I'm working out the software for that. Um, the other thing that's going to I'm going to have is oh on the front I'm going to have a push button for a spot control, um, and when you press that button, the Arduino is going to turn on the second output on the uh, clock generator board on your current frequency, and that second output is going to be loosely coupled to the receiver jack, receiver antenna out, so you'll be able to spot the transmitter to your receiver um, to get you on frequency. Uh, so that should work pretty well. The tuning control is just a, a, a potentiometer. The Arduino is going to use that to sense a, a, a linear voltage range and translate that to a frequency output um, between 472 and 479 kilohertz covering the entire 630 meter amateur band. Uh, and so that'll be that'll be pretty straightforward tuning for your transmitter. So that's what I'm working on. Um, the circuit, as I've already talked about, you know, the Arduino side of it for the VFO, uh, for the power amplifier, I'm using this um, really nice little simple PA designed by uh, GW3UEP over there in uh, uh, the United Kingdom, I think. I haven't looked up who he, who he actually is, but I will give him full credit, of course since I'm using basically his power amplifier, which is a very simple um, power amp. This is a class D power amp, right? So it's a non-linear power amplifier. And that's fine for CW, uh, for frequency shift keyed modes like RIDI, MFSK, Olivia, Thor, Hellschreiber. Uh, but no good for linear modes like AM, single sideband, or PSK. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's... I'll get into that in just a second. 
but it's a very, very simple um, PA. It has one power MOSFET here, and I'll, I'll put this diagram up on the screen bigger and, and we'll, we'll explain it here. Um, so you've got your voltage coming in from your switching relay. Uh, you've got a resistor and a couple of capacitors to, to filter that. Um, there's a ferrite bead right here to help limit RF going back out to your power supply rail. And there's a large choke, L1 here, that also chokes off RF so that any power or any RF that's being generated doesn't go back out your power rail. Um, you got a filter capacitor here on the input to the uh, on the uh, drain to the MOSFET. And then a coupling capacitor here, another inductor and filter network here, uh, and then finally your RF out to the antenna. Uh, the filter network's a low-pass filter, obviously, to cut down on the uh, uh, harmonics, especially the first harmonic, which falls in the broadcast band, and it's it's, he, he, it's greater than 50 dB down, which is the requirement. Uh, power MOSFET, now he uses an IRF 510, which is very popular in these projects. I didn't have one, but I did find um, on an old UPS that I had salvaged for parts some IRF 640s, which are N-channel power MOSFETs that have a higher uh, breakdown voltage rating, but most of the rest of the specs are the same, so I'm going to use one of those and it should be fine. Uh, transient protection on the input here and a coupling capacitor, and then this is, this is your signal input, which will come from the uh, clock generator chip, the VFO. So a very, very simple uh, power amplifier design. Now, I said it's class D, which is nonlinear. What does that mean? Um, well, uh, a linear amplifier, okay, on a linear amp, your output reflects your input voltage linearly. So as the input voltage rises, the output voltage rises in a linear fashion. Um, and the same for negative, right? So you get an exact waveform uh, replication on the output of the amplifier. And that's important for amplitude modulated signaling uh, because your amplitude modulation change is linear, right? It happens gradually and that needs to be reflected on the output. A nonlinear amp is kind of binary. As that input voltage rises, it switches on and then it switches off, uh, resulting in a square wave. Uh, that's no good for amplitude modulation or single sideband, but it's fine for CW where you're just turning a carrier on and off or where you're shifting a carrier around in frequency like in Whisper, MFSK, Hellschreiber, and so on. Um, so you might think, well, that's, that's bad. Why go with that? Well, there's a couple of uh, reasons. One is simplicity. It's, it's a very simple amplifier design. Uh, two, it's extremely efficient. Since that, that output transistor is turning on and turning off, um, you're not losing much in the, uh, in the uh, amplifier device itself. You know, it's not consuming as much of that power. And the efficiency of this amplifier is uh, on the order of 80% or greater, um, which is really good. That also means that this doesn't run that hot and you get a lot more power. You get more power out, you know, without that much heat generated. So that's what a nonlinear amp is. Um, and so that's what I'm going with. Now, his... Uh, um, layout of the PA board. It's You can see how simple it is, right? It's very simple. Um, the hardest part is these coils, I think. I mean, these are just a few discrete components, few cap capacitors and resistors, and uh, one transistor. But you do have to wind these inductors. And in order to uh, facilitate those, I used the 3D printer. So here is one of the inductors. And here's the other two. And I've already printed out the forms and wound them. Um, these little clips I had to do, do as an afterthought. I designed all these inductors with a hole in the bottom and my intent was to mount them standing up, right? Well, then I did a face palm as I realized if you take two inductors and you have them like this near each other, um, they're going to couple to each other. They're going to interfere with each other like an air-gapped transformer, right? Because the magnetic fields are, are in line with each other. So what you need to do is you need to have, you know, one like that. <laughs> and then if you have two that are sideways, you don't want them side like that to each other. You want them perpendicular so that they don't interfere with each other either. And you can see 
on his layout that that's exactly what he did. He has one inductor standing upright. He has one going this way. He has one going that way. So that they're not parallel to each other in any case, and they're not going to interfere with each other. So I needed to print out these little clips um, after I'd wound these coils. I didn't want to redo the coils and go through all that work. So I just printed these little clips that'll mount on there like that and will allow me then to mount the inductor on the PC board that way. So those are the inductors. They're all done. Um, there is the IFR, IRF 640 output transistor. And I've found a couple of relays to do the uh, switching. Transmit receive relay, and this one will be the uh, relay on the receive antenna that will ground it when you go into transmit mode to protect your receiver. You don't want to feed any, RF, any strong RF down to the receiver. But there will still be enough RF getting coupled in, just a little bit, that you'll be able to hear it on the receiver. So your receiver will, be, will become your side tone and also um, your monitor when you're spotting the transmitter. So I've started getting parts together for that and uh, I need to start assembling the board. Um, and as I said, this is going to be the layout, you know, in the chassis here. It should be a nice clean little, uh, little transmitter when I get it done. And it should put out somewhere around uh, 7 to 8 watts um, with a 13.8 volt supply. So it's, you know, it's essentially QRP because the, the antenna is going to be inefficient. <laughs> you know, the, the problem with 630 meters is the wavelength. I mean, if you take 630 meters, if you wanted to make an efficient antenna like a vertical, right, with a radial field, um, a quarter wave uh, vertical at 630 meters uh, is 100 and, 150 some meters. It works out to about 472 feet in height. Yeah, who's going to be able to do a quarter wave antenna for 630 meters? You can't do it. So what we do is we find a way to load up um, our existing antennas for that band with a big inductor. So that's project number two, is I'm going to be building an antenna tuner um, for the 630 meter band to allow me to tune or match my uh, end-fed wire for it. And I've also got the, uh, the hula hoop uh, multi-turn magnetic loop, and I'm working on getting that SWR on that down to where I could transmit on it. It's not going to be efficient at all, but it's an experiment. It'll be fun. But the first things first, I need to get the transmitter done. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, in the next video, I should have the transmitter all together and we will demo it. I'll talk about the software and what it has to do and how it works. And uh, we'll feed it into a dummy load and uh, see if we can figure out how to measure its output at the, uh, at the low frequency that it's at. And uh, maybe make an on-air contact with it at that point if I've got the antenna stuff done. So that's what I'm up to. Um, I just wanted to give you an update and uh, get something out there because this project's taken me a while. So until the next time, we'll, uh, we'll uh, see you later. 73. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.